to um, we need mothers to buy um, buy the voucher uh, fresh food, vegetables, and fruit. Um, public health thought that was an absolutely stupid idea and did absolutely nothing about it for the last three years. So, and that was in the transition between public health being NHS public health to now. Uh, we tried to, sorry, they have tried to uh, revitalise that scheme, but um, I, I am disappointed that page 51 and page, page 53 seem to only mention one farmer's market. Yeah, I was going to say the, the action plan is obviously a rolling action plan. It's the first version of it. Um, and it's effectively knitting together the actions of the partners and those around the table. Um, you'll see that the, in the report it talks about our hope that the, in the, future, the, the future we're one of the reasons for um, wanting to publicise the, the progress that's been made is to try and get more people aware of the strategy but all, and, then, and also to reflect wider actions because it's it's important now that the, the action for the farmers market is uh, transition town west Kirby coal group and then mellow yellow group the transition town west Kirby just happens to be on the, the current make, makeup of the climate change group so it's not that we're not aware of other farmers markets this is a reflection of what other people are bringing to saying you know that this is, these are the actions we're engaged in as part of this partnership work. Can I just, just come back on that please? Um, the, yes, I'm very aware as a, uh, a member of the Fire Authority, I actually did attend the Climate Change Group in the past. Um, however, um, there has been no contact to my knowledge. Um, and obviously I go to the Women, uh, women market. But we have no contact whatsoever from the climate change group or public health. We've been, it's all been the other way around and never, never um, from, from Better Food Women or, or whatever. And I just think that's very disappointing given that there are people who are committed to local food out there that are not being engaged uh, because the only group that's been invited to um, to the climate change group that has been with uh, West Cambridge Farmers Market. And don't decry that. What I'm saying is get everybody else on board. Okay, you know that. It's been very brief and it's regarding the, uh, the uh, strategy action plan. Um, just um, a comment really about the objective one. Um, a number of uh, the housing associations in particular, social health and landlords are looking at providing white goods for tenants and it might be something that you might want to uh, speak to them about um, because if they're buying uh, white goods for tenants it could be that it can be expanded upon. Um, the other thing is on uh, objective 2.12 um, uh, the next collective switch should that be September 15 on page 43. Yeah, it's September 40, it's September 40. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And, and just uh, one more. Um, we've heard regarding the, the my ticket and the promotion of that, but under objective 3 and 9. We talk about the walls travel, but there's no mention of, of the um, my ticket, and that's on page 47. Sorry, and it might be something that they could promote as part of that objective. Just move the recommendation. Thank you. Switching on to item eight, scrutiny of council plan and delivery arrangements. Uh, 
that after you had to catch up by Monty Cock now by uh, starting up and from, from down here. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll just uh, run through a few slides in relation to scrutiny of the capsule plan and delivery arrangements. So uh, I'll just I'll probably save my eyes and I can just work through the slides a little bit from down here as well. So uh, I think uh, just to start us off, uh, you'll all be aware that uh, over the past few months uh, the council has established a new, uh, a new council plan of 20 pledges by 2020. Uh, so this is just some scene setting, as I said, scene setting, I should say, uh, around that. Um, just before I start off, uh, importantly, uh, when you heard our colleagues from Mersey Travel this morning, uh, sorry, early on uh, this evening, uh, John was describing how it's actually been a partnership summit today. Uh, and I'm really pleased to advise Chair that uh, all the key partners have met this week and have signed up to the key pledges and outcomes in uh, the plan. So actually now, this is the will plan going forward, which sets out that joint vision uh, for all partners uh, on, on, on behalf of all the residents of Will. Uh, so just as a reminder then, uh, you'll recall that the priorities in what is now the Will plan, uh, we, we, uh, we have the area of, um, uh, in the people area, so Will is a place where the vulnerable are safe and protected. Every child gets a good start in life and all the residents are respected and valued. And we've got a whole series of um, seven of the 20 pledges related to people. We then have uh, the environment theme. Uh, Wirral has an attractive and sustainable environment where good health and excellent quality of life is enjoyed by everybody who lives there. And the series of uh, environment related pledges there. And then, uh, very importantly, uh, uh, and a key focus for this uh, committee, uh, we have business as a key theme. Wirral is a place where employers want to invest and businesses thrive. Uh, we must seize the opportunities before us and work hard to create new ones to transform Wirral's economy for this generation and the next. We'll focus on Wirral's priority growth sectors to promote uh, and grow jobs in the visitor economy advanced manufacturing, maritime and renewable energy sectors. Uh, and as it says there, we'll work with our partners to deliver these ambitions for Will and ensure our plans are both economically and environmentally sustainable. And certainly the members of this committee will be very familiar with the, uh, with the pledges around that. Uh, importantly, uh, around technology and infrastructure. We need assets and buildings that are fit for purpose. Greater job opportunities in rural, increasing inward investment, thriving small businesses, a workforce skills that match our business needs, and very importantly, a vital towards the economy as well. So, for delivering this plan, then, uh, so the principles are if we deliver this plan effectively, residents will see better job opportunities, a quality local environment, uh, and better health. And our old people will be living longer and well in their own life, well in their own homes, and our children will have a far better start in life. Uh, we will understand our communities better, we will do everything that we possibly can in collaboration, and we will be a modern public service. So these are some of the key principles that are going to underpin this uh, delivery plan that is coming forward. So importantly, and this is the, uh, the, the significant bit I want to talk through with the committee. So, sat below what is now the Wirral Plan, uh, there will then be a delivery plan to which sets out how those outcomes will be achieved. Mm -hmm. That delivery plan is currently in development. The idea is that it will be essentially a two-phase process. Draft one is planned to go to the council cabinet on the 9th of October. The idea then is that um, scrutiny uh, will take place between October and December. Uh, scrutiny of the priorities and the deliverables 
and there will be consultation engagement with partners. And the idea then is that uh, that feedback will then go into the second phase or draft two that will be the final detailed version of the delivery plan which will be published in February. And very, very importantly, uh, this covers the uh, business planning side of things, so it's the delivery plan, but then importantly, running in tandem alongside this is the council's medium term financial strategy. So there would be a five year delivery plan to achieve the world plan, and alongside that, um, uh, as I said, a, a five year medium term financial strategy to deliver that. So in relation to uh, this first phase, so this uh, initial scrutiny uh, uh, between now and December, um, it's, uh, as I said, it's been suggested there that the purpose will be to review the content of the delivery plan, uh, to identify the key priorities. Um, there would then be suggested a schedule of what at this stage we just described as workshops that will take place during October and November and I think the idea would then will be from that scrutiny process um, that feedback would then go into uh, December committee cycle and feed into the final version of the detailed plan in the new year. Uh, I think the idea then, uh, very importantly, is that once the detailed uh, five-year delivery plan is then uh, approved, clearly that would then form from 16, 17 onwards, we'd expect that to then form uh, in for the work programme of this committee for 16, 17 going forward. So really this is just uh, a broad outline of the timetable and the context of scrutiny over the coming months. And I think very importantly, uh, I think the idea is that at this committee, uh, the council is inviting uh, any comments either here that will be minuted today or separately feedback chair that will go through to the council's coordinating committee on the 30th of September and it would then be down to the coordinating committee to make a final decision on the detail of how the scrutiny process is going to work over the coming months. Uh, happy to take any questions on the chat. Yeah. Any questions from anyone? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. No. Okay. Just one quick one of the next year. How do you expect us to make comments on the delivery plan? Through you, Chair, the, um, I think the idea is that that first phase, so the, the high-level principles or statements of intent of the delivery plan, that will actually go to Cabinet on the 9th of October. So that high-level version will be there, and then, as I understand it, between that 9th of October Cabinet and early December, the scrutiny process would need to be, uh, whatever is agreed, would need to be put in place and in place, which would then, uh, feedback would then go into a detailed version. I heard all that, I understood it the first time. It was your comments at the end of any policy we make this evening. And I said, I've been making this this evening, but we don't want to do it. Yeah, through, through you, Chair, I think the idea of this corporate presentation is um, this is very much about rather than the detail of what's in the plan, I think we're really after the steer of the process, the scrutiny process, how it should work, how the workshop should operate, etc. I think that was the core design here of, uh, of this presentation. Okay. I, think, I think it happens every year, doesn't it? We seem to be. The, the scrutiny committees always seem to be running after the bus. Sure, yeah. um, it happens every every single year, um, but that's that's the nature of the beast. Okay, so uh, that's so we noted, agreed. Agree. Item number nine: Director of Plan Performance Management Report. Yeah.
Thank you, Chair. Just uh, again, uh, mindful of what we the team, just very briefly, uh, this is the usual performance management report that comes forward to the committee. This time it's actually quarter one, so it's April to June of 2015. Um, I guess just referring back to the, the previous item, uh, as, as set out in 1.2 of the report, it's probably just worth highlighting that this is the performance management framework for the old outgoing corporate plan and directive plans. And I think the plan is that in due course, once the delivery plan is in place to deliver the will plan by 2020, a new governance and performance management framework will be put in place uh, you know, in, the, in the new year. Um, and really just to highlight, uh, as we say now in 2.3 of the report, at this stage, we've got 13 reportable indicators of the 13, 11 are green, uh, and we've got one amber and one red. Um, in the uh, appendices to the report, um, the one red is a subject which members are very familiar with, and we get very detailed there in last time, the one about road safety and KSIs. Uh, and the, the amber one is um, summarised on page 72 and is really around just the latest on the delivery of the Dock Bridges replacement project. Uh, just to give uh, membership reassurance that we're just in the process of finalising the legal agreement between us and Peel, which is one of the key steps that needs to be in place to take the project forward. Um, and uh, we will be looking at taking uh, a, a report, a strong leader report, literally in the next few weeks. So we are confident, even though that's showing up on the of this pitch, we're confident that the project is still on track. Thank you. Steve, Benji. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, it's really obviously to pick up the red one. Um, I understand the reasons for the great issue. Um, it does seem disappointing that we, we missed the target. Now I know fire service and police and ourselves are working together on various strategies, but we, we do seem to regularly miss the target with regard to um, people in the field or seriously injured uh, with regard to traffic. And I'm just wondering, in Mark's comments, about how the new strategy since it's the old plan will develop and how we can nail down and reduce the number of people who are injured in the race in the I think uh, I think Jeff, you know, members will be very familiar. So you know in summary we had some great progress on improving road safety uh, between about 2005 and 2010, 11, 12. Clearly the last couple of years, the Merseyside trend, so it's not just Willow, but the Merseyside trend uh, has been very, very challenging for us. Uh, it was very challenging for us last year and we are, we are still seeing that same pattern where, we're on, where we are seeing those high numbers. Very clearly as part of the delivery plan process, as, as we've said, it's work in progress, so uh, obviously it's ongoing, but um, we will clearly need to uh, look carefully at the whole road safety agenda and issue and how we, how we deal with that in the uh, delivery plan going forward. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> I wanted to ask about um, selective licensing. I'm really pleased that it's, uh, it's green and it seems to be making uh, good progress. I just wondered um, when do you think you'd be in a position to bring back a more detailed report? You know, what sort of data do you need to have gathered before you could bring the proper report to the committee? I think I'll probably need to come back to you on the details of that. So the selective licensing has only just recently been introduced, as you'll be aware. Um, and it's very much early implementation stages, but uh, probably if the impact could be with us tonight, he's not been too well. So I'll take the detailed question back to him and then circulate a response to members and um, probably well tomorrow if that's okay in that detailed question. Thank you, Chair. Pick up on a point that Steve raised before, and it's a common bit in the record itself, but even though the, the figures haven't increased, it does say at the very top. We have not yet had any update on 
know it's a catch with a few things that one may be sad to lose. Do we expect this to be even worse than we thought it? Or hopefully it's better? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I wish it was getting better. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the, latest, um, the latest indications, so I think these may still be kind of like professional figures, but uh, talking today, recent colleagues this evening, so at the six month point, we we're on around about 67 against what should be a decreasing target of 98. So that, that trend, where, trend where we were about 40% over last year. Unfortunately, it's still continuing. Um, even in the last few days, we've, uh, you know, some members will have picked up from the local press how we had a, a you know, very, very tragic uh, accident involving a young gentleman in the early hour, very early hours of the morning, uh, on, a, on a motorcycle. So uh, obviously, um, you yeah, the challenges continue. So, will we get a, a sort of some stage? Thanks. I, I, I know I only got one in this one following on from what Steve said. I mean, I, I think he said we missed the target, but as Mark's just said, we're, we're looking at 52 percent. Um, and seeing it is one of the most um, critical things we deal with, we deal a lot with this, but this is literally life and death situations. Um, Mark mentioned about the Merseyside figures. Can we try and look at national figures and see how we're doing against national, maybe just a random selection? Because I think it's something that we serious about every month with the Steve said, oh yeah, it's bad again, it's bad again. This has gone on for a good few years now. And there may not be an answer, I know that, but I think we should strive on this one to, to try and uh, try and do something or at least show that we will try and put whatever um, yes, yeah, and actually we can certainly do that, yeah. Um, as I say, I'm very familiar with the Merseyside figures. Yeah. It's 40% of the, across the board, all parts of Merseyside. Um, but um, <coughs> it's the national figures as well. Uh, and we have got uh, ongoing meetings uh, with uh, senior representatives from Merseyside Police to be uh, doing everything we can around the agenda. We keep saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I just come in there as well with a comment? I think there's more and more cars on the road. Every day, every month, every year, there's more and more cars. We see less and less police. We see um, signs up for speed limits that people don't take any notice of. And there's no, there's no police around to take people to account when the speed limit. Um, because of Finance again, we see less and less cameras. You know, so is it going to be? And you know, we shouldn't throw our hand in or throw our hands in the air. But are the days of seeing depreciating <coughs> figures going down and down on road safety because of the, the pressures of the, the life we're all leading and people are speeding and all the things I've just said? So maybe is it the, the days where we're going to see? Appreciation, which we would all like to see, of course we would. But is it, is it going to be a case of. Yes, of course we have. Of course we have. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So we'll, we'll move on to item 10 financial monitoring. And uh, David. Yes, thank you, Chair. Just two quick points to make on uh, agenda item 10. Uh, this is your year end financial report on our performance for 2014-2015 financial year. Uh, we had a uh, £3.3 million underspend across the directorate in revenue expenditure over uh, that 12-month uh, period. We also had a capital outturn of um, £16.6 million, and all the detail is set out for you there in the report. And then on page 81, I think probably this should have been um, separate agenda item, but the two finance reports have been put together. So at pages 81 through 85, you have a report there on the first quarter's performance between April and June of this year. And again, all the detail is set out for you. Uh, the only thing I would highlight to you is that at the present time we're uh, identifying uh, a potential 
able to spend of £300,000 due to some efficiencies within the supported housing uh, programme. And we've known the areas of concern at this time within the directory that need to bring to members' attention. Uh, I'm happy to try and answer any questions if there are any on those uh, two items. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Just a comment, really, and again, it's something I've mentioned quite a number of times, the floor of the video. Very disappointing. It was built and everyone was so impressed with it, one of our junior on grounds, and we seem to be losing money. Is there any way, I know we're strapped, can we put a bit of effort into seeing if we can do a bit of a business deal through the floor, which should be making money for it. Okay, I can just um, try and respond to that briefly. Um, the floral pavilion uh, is unfortunately requiring that level of subsidy at the present time in the council. That has actually reduced slightly on the previous year's subsidy that's been required. Uh, we're very conscious at the present time of the funding that the council puts into the floral. Uh, without going back too much into the history, it, it would appear, because I've not managed it for a long time, but inherited this as an issue, that some of the initial assumptions around the business plans didn't prove to be um, realistic. Uh, and as a consequence, we've had a financial situation to uh, deal with that. Uh, now, where I am at the moment is we're working very hard to do a number of things to the floor, um, which hopefully over the next two to three years will remove the council subsidy that goes in. We might not be able to move it in its entirety, but we'll certainly can reduce it uh, from where it is now. So we've got some new income generation opportunities. We're a lot better now in terms of the shows that are booked and knowing actually where all the costs are and everything. Uh, we will need to look at some kind of restructure arrangement and we're also looking at some commercial opportunities uh, as well as the floor. I can't go into everything in detail in open session uh, just this evening, but when um, we have finalised the plan, I'm happy to share that with members in terms of what we're seeking to do. I would just add that whilst we will look to reduce the council subsidy, we will still look at the same time to maintain what I believe to be a very high quality um, event venue for the council and something that is um, um, it's, it's loved really by the people of Wood uh, from there. And I think you can do both, um, but there are challenging circumstances. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to ask a question uh, regarding um, AIDS and adaptations. Is there any backlog at all in, in any of those um, needing to be done? Um, I just have to get that information for you from probably in part and then circulate that around. I don't have that information with me this evening. I'm afraid we can provide it to you that's okay. Okay, the, the main reason for me asking that question is obviously because of the summer announcement affecting the house associations, which currently contribute towards that. They may be very well looking not to subsidise in future by, you know, other councils don't get subsidies, do they? So I'm just really thinking we probably need to take that into consideration because I know some of the house associations are doing a 50% subsidy there and given their rent loss, that might not be available to us in the future. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, to pick up uh, what David sort of said earlier about the um, underspend 4.3 on page 82, um, it says about contract efficiencies. I'm just wondering uh, if you could possibly elaborate on that, David. Yes, very, very brief. If you need the specific detail, again, I'll need to just ask the Housing College to speak to you. But what they've been doing generally around the supporting housing contracts is they've been reviewing them all, uh, renegotiating them, keeping the same uh, standards of, of what is being procured, but being able to negotiate that at more competitive levels. So that has resulted in us identifying potential understands from those efficiencies within that contract negotiation and that. Yeah, yeah just, to, just to comment, I, I, mean, I, I find that very helpful because obviously clearly we're supporting people who are vulnerable and uh, yes, okay, the, the service that we're providing is being supported and, and, and the support that the people are getting is, is uh, of the same standard. And 